Well, good week to you. Here we are. It's week five. We are officially more than halfway through this course. And this week, we're going to be talking about making and helping others make ethical decisions. Now, let me remind you that your second assignment, A Covenant of Conduct, is due this Friday. And you want to have that in by midnight on Friday. You know, I was looking at some of our discussions and thinking of discussions that uh, I've had. And, you know, it's really easy to say, hey, hey, you know, if we only did what Jesus tells us to do, and hey, uh, we, you know, we could just sum up expected behaviors or covenant, uh, covenants of conduct in something like the golden rule, then, you know, everything would be fine. The problem is we are human, and that, I don't want to say it's impossible to do, but until everybody in our congregations, uh, including us, are able to live in that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus day in and day out and be continually conscious of, of, of God's presence and uh, working in with us, you know, in that constant conversation with God, meaning we can hear from God, hear from God in all of that, uh, we're not going to be there yet. And quite honestly, there are very few people, at least within Christendom uh, and the Christian faith, that would be able to tell you that we will achieve that status in this life. So we, uh, as humans, and it really is much about our humanness, we as humans are not able to to just say, hey, this is how everybody should act. Hey, this is how I'm going to act. This is why we need these these tools, these covenant of conducts, these expected behaviors that allow us to be very clear about what is expected. And particularly with that covenant of conduct, if you hear that, it's a covenant of conduct. That is a promise. That is about accountability. That is about, it's not just about me and, uh, and God. This is a covenant. It's between me and thee, someone else, and God within the center of that. And every covenant of conduct I've ever seen has is is not fulfillable 100% 100% of the time all of it is fulfillable uh, is fulfillable but not 100% 100% of a time and and a lot of us a lot of ministers I'll, I'll speak uh, for us that way a lot of ministers are reticent to uh, ascribe to a covenant of conduct are are reticent to accept that we should have covenant of conduct because it really does come down down to being able to admit that we are fallible, that we really are human, that even though we are ministers, uh, that we do not have it all together at all times. And as one who has worked with hundreds, I, literally hundreds, my guess is uh, well over a thousand ministers in the course of her ministry, I can tell you how important these covenants are uh, for us to remember, for us to live by, uh, how important they are to hold out before us and that it is the ministers who blow them off the ministers who will not uh, will not allow themselves to be measured by something like that that those are most often the ones who fall and fail so we're, that's that assignment. I really want to come back to that, and, and I want to encourage you to, one, not blow off this assignment and to take it very, very seriously and to ask yourself, what is it that God calls me to be, and how does God, what does, how does God call me to act uh, in His service, right, by being able to serve him, what needs to be there? What needs to be in place? What are my own shortcomings, right? Not just uh, not beyond our or beyond our humanness. What are my own shortcomings that I need to be held accountable to? That I'd be willing to share this covenant of conduct with one other person and say, I really need you to help hold me accountable. I want to be accountable to you. I want you to ask me these questions you know, every week, every month, uh, every quarter. Better every week, every month, to, to, uh, so that I can make sure I am walking the walk that I need to be walking, that I want to walk, because I can't do it on my own. We say, oh, I'll do it with God's help. Well, God works through other people. We need those people that we can trust, those people that we will trust with our stories, that we will trust with our walk, that we can put that out there in front of them. 
that's your covenant of, of conduct. Take, take the pieces from the covenant of conducts that you've been reading. If you're a Presbyterian, you look at that Presbyterian covenant of conduct, you're going to want to incorporate that. Uh, it may not read word for word because you, the, 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 um, the test, I guess, of all of these or the assignment part of all of these is to sum that up in the words that make sense for you. For you Methodists, you know, for all of those pieces, for you disciples, same thing. You know, we have this very long, not as long as the Presby's, but a very long uh, uh, covenant of conduct, right, an ethical conduct that we are expected and really required to stand up to. When churches make ethical um, uh, complaints or bring ethical charges to me about a minister, if it's not something um, along the lines of abuse, if it's not a reportive, um, uh, it's not a mandated reporting uh, matter, what I'll ask them to do is sum them up with in line with our code of co uh, conduct because a lot of times they just don't like the minister and they can spout all kinds of, of things they don't like about the minister or the way they feel like the minister isn't ask, acting very ministerial but to begin to be able to objectify that to be able to to bring that to a place where we're able to follow up with the investigations uh, and those processes we need to know how is that violating that covenant of conduct when we get clear about that for ourselves, then we're able to help others get real about their ethical decisions. And uh, this is a key piece. We're going to work this week with the ethical action test. It's very short, uh, just some questions. But it's, it's a, again, a tool that we can use to measure back, to read back against what we teach, what we're, we're faced with when our congregations are faced with something. How do we do that? Um, uh, what can we what can we use that's simple and direct and directive and helps us to work through all of those pieces? You're going to note that the reflection questions this week uh, that they are really going to come very much out of your readings. Uh, some of these questions may be touching too close to home. You don't want to name names. Please do not name names. Uh, they may be too personal for you to uh, really talk about uh, about your congregations. But I want you to make it as personal as possible. And please do not tell me, please do not post, do not tell your fellow and fella students that you're not seeing this in your congregation. My friends, it is there. Even in the best of congregations, it is there. And you may not be recognizing it. It is possible you've always been in that congregation, that it's it, this, uh, what, what goes on in your congregation is normal and uh, you don't see it as problematic. You don't see problems, but if there are matters going on in your congregation that you question, that perhaps through these first four weeks uh, have made you think, ah, you know, is that right? Could that be wrong? Uh, is that really what God would want? Is it not what God would, would want? That's, there's a reason that that's causing us to think, and I want you to carry through on those thoughts, not to just stop them in mid-thought or, or even pre-thought in a lot of ways and say, oh, no, no. No, 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 I'm just reading that wrong. Trust yourself. We're not out there looking for uh, for any kind of problem that we can behind any uh, uh, under any uh, kind of bush. We, uh, I do not want you to go searching out problems so that somehow you can make this all right. That's not what this is about. But I don't want you to. Uh, to let yourself off the hook, to not do this work and the hard work of, of recognizing and to, to taking maybe what we recognize or we're denying we've been recognizing because we've been holding it in or we might hold it in or we don't want to address it. I really, I just want you to recognize, get it out here so that you can take as objective a look at it as possible. See what I'm saying? So do this work. Do not let yourself off the hook. Do not say, well, we don't. When you start to say don't or not, then my guess is more often than not, it is about won't. I won't do that. I'm not letting you off the hook. Don't let yourselves off the hook. Have some fun with these questions. They're, I think they're really interesting questions. 
And they're important for us, uh, particularly as we uh, not just think through, but we get ready to help uh, our congregations, those we serve, whether we're there as ministers, as key uh, lay leaders, whatever our capacities uh, for now and into the future, whatever ministry is going to look, uh, look like for you, we need to have these uh, critical thinking and processing and observing, thinking through skills into place. So. Uh, for those of us that don't really have them, and even for those of us that do, we need to, to acquire them, we need to hone them, we need to always be sitting with them so that we're never caught unprepared. So do, please, have some fun with this. Uh, have some fun with that covenant of conduct. Remember, uh, it is the process of doing it that is, uh, is most important. Want to see it done thoroughly and, uh, yeah, thoroughly and with some consideration and personalized as well for you. Uh, so I think that's all we've got. I've got for you this week, except have a really great week. I look forward to seeing your posts, to convert, conversing with you, and to getting to see you next week. Have a great week.